I'm not even going to do an introduction. I'm literally getting into it because I'm in a terrible fucking mood today. And I want to try to brighten all of our moods up by sharing this piece of information with you. I got the AJA Scion camera. So let me first tell you the reason why I'm not in a great mood and why I'm very impulsively ADHD as quick as I can telling you what I got. Today was going to be the day that I was going to be able to start shooting with the camera because the proprietary like SSD media drive that this camera uses was going to show up in the mail today via UPS. Um, the buyer, not buyer, I'm the buyer, the seller um, who I, I bought the, the media from put such a ridiculous tight signature required policy on the package that it was almost a losing battle for me to even get it. The reason why I say that is like most of us, I work a 40 hour week job at an office. And so I'm not home when UPS and FedEx usually delivers to my building. And um, <sighs> so obviously I've been playing cat and mouse with UPS for the past couple of days. And today was the final day where I put a note on my door and I was like, hey, I, I, we have a ring doorbell on our door and I caught him and I was like, is there any way that you can drop this off at my leasing office? They can sign on my behalf. He goes, no, I can get fired for doing that. All good, I'm not mad at UPS for that. The UPS is just, you know, abiding by their policies and their job. It's not UPS's fault. There is absolutely no reason whatsoever um, for an eBay seller to be that paranoid, especially when they see that it's going to an apartment building. There's absolutely no reason for that. And you know what, worst case scenario, if I got burned, somebody stole the package, something happened, there's policies in place on eBay for both of us to be made whole again. I've gone through it so many times in my fucking life. That's why this whole situation could have been avoided if this guy wasn't, you know, didn't do what he did. So now that that's out of the way, so that's my long story of why I'm in a bad mood and also why you're probably not going to see footage out of this camera for a while, at least in a couple more weeks, because I have to figure out, you know, how to try to get one of the media things again. So first thing I'm going to mention about this is that this was not on the initial list of cameras that I was considering. This was a last minute consideration that won. Um, I will tell you the cameras that I was, I was considering. I was considering um, the Sony F23 again. I was considering the Panasonic HPX3700 Varicam. I was considering a used uh, Red Scarlet Dragon, uh, which was, it was in good shape, but it had a lot of hours on it and I got kind of nervous. It had, 12,000 hours on it. I'm like, I don't, uh, this thing could crap out on me. And it's like, it was a good deal. Like it was a lot lower than what Scarlet Dragons are going for on eBay by quite a bit. I'm like, ah, it just doesn't feel right. So I didn't go with that. And then I lo was looking at the Sony FX30. And at the last minute I was like going through the internet and I came across an article about this and was reminded about it, you know, cause those of us that have been in filmmaking for a while, almost all of us knew about this camera when it was released, it was a big deal. It was the same year that Blackmagic got into the camera game and sad to say, the lesser of two companies won the camera war. Um, it's kind of like Betamax versus VHS, VHS won. You know, doesn't mean it's the better tool, it's just the one that won and became commercialized and is more affordable and blah, blah, blah. So um, my whole thing is that, I'm sure you guys are aware of the fact that I'm really interested in unicorn cameras and you know, cameras that people might have forgotten about. You know, it's the whole, my whole thing with like the Tate Vary Cam and the Sony F900 and all those, you know, the F23 and Genesis and all, all that stuff. And this was a camera like the Thompson Viper, which is few and far between now and any ones that are usually available online. People are asking way too much money for it, um, at least in my opinion. Maybe my opinion will change once I start using it. I'll be like, okay, now it's justified. I was able to find a Scion for um, under $900, which is nuts. Everything works on it. I've tested all the electronics on it. Everything works fine. Um, 
which is pretty amazing. The camera's in great shape. And um, I'm really excited to use it. I have a very fucking crappy lens on the camera right now. It's just something to get me started. It was a little $50, 10 to 24 mil lens. Um, I'm going to get a better lens down the road here uh, within the next month or so and, you know, build it up a, a little bit more um, just in terms of that. But it's just this, this is to kind of just get me started. And obviously the last thing that I absolutely need in order to use it is media. And so that whole debacle is still in progress. But those of you that don't know about this camera or have forgotten about it, um, I'll tell you the specifications um, on paper in terms of what this camera is capable of doing. Um, it's got some pretty cool stuff in it too. So the camera's got a Super 35 sensor in it, um, or it might be APS-C, I don't remember, but they're pretty, they're like the same thing. Um, global shutter CMOS chip, which is interesting. I've never used a global shutter CMOS. I'm used to global shutter in CCD. This is a new territory for me. Internally, it shoots um, up to 12-bit ProRes in the 444 color space, which is insane. Um, that's pretty cool. It does um, one to 60 frames per second in ProRes 422, one to 30 frames per second in ProRes 4444. Um, and then it has the ability to shoot raw out of the SDI, but I don't believe there is a single recorder on the market that will allow you to get the full potential of that raw signal. So it's kind of moot. Um, there's no devices out there that support it. The Atomos, the original Atomos Shogun recorder, I know does take the raw signal, but it converts it from 16 bit or 12 bit to 10 bit ProRes, which is just stupid. So I'd be getting better quality just right out of the internal media than going the like recorder screen route or whatever. Um, so that's pretty much all that I can say about, oh, 12 stops of dynamic range. There's debate about that. There's a lot of early reviewers that said that they were only about, they were only able to get eight to 10 stops out of the camera. Um, I'm gonna challenge the fuck out of that. My whole interpretation of the Scion is that I think it got dealt a bad deck of cards. And I think that AJA um, quite possibly made a really impressive camera that was released with terrible first version firmware, in my opinion. I think that there was a lot of things that were done in the initial launch of the camera that caused the camera's, part of the camera's demise. And um, I'm trying to I guess, prove myself right in the fact that I think that this camera is capable of a hell of a lot more than what the original testers and users and reviewers gave this thing credit for. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And honestly, obviously I'll stay transparent with you guys. If I, if I put my shoe in my mouth, I will. But it's something that, um, you know, was extremely affordable for me and interested the hell out of me on what it was capable of doing. Um, so I want to give it a shot. So in terms of interface, the interface of the cameras on this side, you have SDI for, mon for just a monitor, two XLR with fan and power built in. You've got an SDI or blah, blah, HDMI uh, uh, monitor and a USB reference in, shit ton of uh, HDSDI. You've got four HDSDIs here. Um, you have an SDI monitor here. Um, it's a lot of plugs. The really cool thing ergonomically that I like, which I'm taking advantage of at the moment, is on top of the camera here, let me see if you can see that. Um, you have a D-tap, an LANC -L link. I can't talk today. You have one of those, and then you have an HDMI monitor right here, which is really cool. Um, handles partially made out of wood. And this is other, like, this is like, in my opinion, I think this is like bougie for no reason. It still is kind of interesting. This shoulder pad is made out of suede leather. Don't, I mean, I guess if you can do it, but I, it's just a weird thing on a camera. Like, 
You know, I know, I do remember when the camera came out that there were a lot of like animal activists that wouldn't shoot on the Scion because they're like, we want the vegan version. Whatever, I'm not vegan. So I don't have to worry about that. But um, yeah, headphone jack on the top here. And that's basically it. It's a very um, straightforward camera. I wouldn't say it's as easy to use as like a Red or an Alexa. It's very menu intuitive. It's not as bad as Sony. Um, but it's very straight to the point. Like, honestly, it feels like the ergonomics of it, especially when you have it on your shoulder, I like tried putting it on my shoulder last night. It sits on you like an Atom film camera does. Like it, the, the ergonomics of it is actually amazing. It's probably the most comfortable shoulder mounted camera I've ever put on my shoulder. So ergonomically, it's great. And then in terms of user interface, the best thing I can compare it to is another AJA device, which is the Key Pro Mini which I had for years with my tape very cam, it's literally the interface of the key pro built directly into a camera system. It's like you have a key pro with an image sensor on it. That's literally what this thing is. So, um, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. I will dive more into this when I'm able to, but as of right now, I can't shoot with it because people on eBay suck. So, that's it, that's all I got. I hope you guys are doing well. I had a very long day at work today. I am exhausted. I got into work really early today and so I'm gonna go relax and kind of tune out and I will talk to you guys as soon as there is something to talk about, especially involving the, the Scion. But this is where I'm at. This is where we're going on this channel. AJA Scion. Right, I'll talk to you guys later.